Welcome to Ultimate DIYer, where you learn to be your own handyman. And today we're going to talk about load centers. So we're going to go over a lot of the basics on a load center so you kind of know what the components are. We're going to have future videos where I'm going to talk about things like the differences in a sub panel versus a main service panel, you know, three phase, single phase. We're going to go through a lot of that in future videos. Today, I just want you to have a basic idea of what the components are so that you know what you're dealing with when you take that panel off. If you ever look inside of your garage or in your you know, closet where there's a panel or any place that you actually have a load center, it can be a little intimidating. People are afraid to pull that cover off. They don't want to be shocked. They know there's a lot of power in there, so they stay away from it. Well, I'm going to show you and kind of demystify some of that today so that you know what's going on. The one that we've got on the wall here is really, this is more of a service you know, entry unit. In other words, you're going to have a meter over here on the side. You're going to have your power coming in from the pole, going through the meter and in through the top. This is a single phase system. I will tell you that 99% of all of the, you know, units you're going to find in the U.S., if they're residential, they're going to be single phase, meaning they're basically going to have three wires, a black, a red, and a white. If you are, you know, in a business or in your industrial, you may be running into three phase. In most cases, you will have three phase. You're going to have a lot more than three wires coming in here, and it's a whole different animal. We'll talk about that later. So we're going to have the three wires coming in here, and it's going to feed the system. So let's talk about what the system is. You're going to have a steel enclosure. You're going to have the enclosure rated for exterior or interior. So depending on where you're putting it, that needs to be the type of unit you pick. It's also going to be rated for a main panel like this one with a big breaker, 200 amps, or it could be a sub panel and it may not have a breaker at all. It may have just the lugs. If you do get one that has just the lugs and you want to put this main breaker in, there's kits you can get to do that and change that and turn it into a system like this with a main breaker. All of my sub panels, have main breakers on them because I like to isolate the power real quickly by just pulling that whole thing if I need to. So keep that in mind. Now also a you know sub panel they're going to be rated anywhere from like 50 amps up to 125 amps. You know you can even put a big one like this as a sub panel as well. So you just need to know where the panel is whether there's another panel in place because there's some rules that you have to play by. We'll go over that in a future video as well. So you're going to have three basic wires coming in, a black, a red, and a common. And I have what's called bus bars. This is a bus bar. This is a bus bar. This is a bus bar. Now, this is going to be my black coming in tying here, and it will go into this side. Each one of these little you know, slots will be able to provide 120 volts on bus bar A. Bus bar B will come in on this side with the red wire and each one of these slots will be able to give me 120 volts as well. Now my common, which is going to be the big white wire, is going to tie in here and it's going to go down this bus. Now the interesting thing about this bus, it goes all the way down and it has a bar. The bar goes over and carries it to the other side. So this is one big bus bar. If you were dealing with a main panel and you have earth grounds, you'll have a spike ran into the ground and you'll have a bare wire coming up and you'll everything in the house. This is your Romex. You will tie an earth ground to it, which is this one here. This is my common. This is my hot. These two wires in the main service panel can be on the same bus all the way around. Not a problem. When we get to a sub panel, that changes. So we will watch, we'll look at that in a future video. But just keep in mind that those can be connected. Now, what you will need to do is if this is the main panel outside, they have a bonding screw location. This one actually has two of them, one here or here. You'll put a green bonding screw in and it bonds the box to this common and earth ground connection so that everything is grounded. If it is a sub panel, you remove that screw or do not place that screw. So the other thing that I have is this rail. This rail holds the back of the breaker. You have a little clip. You have this side here, which has the little spade, which is going to go over 
each one of these bars and there's your on and off the wire actually goes here and tightens here so you're going to take this little clip and you're simply going to put it on that bar and place it just like that and now that one is ready to rock and roll i can turn it on or off that is a single pole the other one is going to be a double pole meaning i have two locations so this right now is is going to be getting power just from this b side the red side it gives me 120 volts at 20 amps this one is going to be 30 amps but it's a double pole meaning i'm going to pull from one of the spades that are here and then one that's barely sticking out here so i'm going to pull from both sides meaning i get 120 120 i get 240 volts so if i take and put this on let's see if we can get it lined up just right right there and that one is in place now so now i'm pulling from both locations and this is a 240 volt 240 volts is what's going to power like your dryer your stove things like that so a couple of the other things i really like about this unit is i love these caps so these open up you put your wire in and you'll tighten it down these are going to be the main wires coming from the street this will be the black this will be the red you'll close it and it has little testing holes here on the side where i can test and make sure that i do have full power okay so now let's talk safety for a second first of all if i'm going to pull the cover off i'm going to flip off the power to the off position and what that does is it is going to shut everything down up to these points and they are protected so when i pull the box off i'm safe i'm not going to be reaching in and grabbing something or touching something that's going to shock me another thing to keep in mind is when you are working in here i try to stay below this area everything down here i watch these big wires do not ever touch those big wires and i will generally try to keep one hand in my pocket and one hand while i'm working because the power will go through your hand through your heart and if you're say touching something else metal try to go to that so now you have become the conductor so you want to be cautious with that so that is your basics when it comes to a panel now there are other things to keep in mind you've got your cover right here that will actually mount now when you go to mount these covers for the very first time they're going to give you the little screws that go in here and if you look closely these are not threaded so when you try to put it in they're not going to want to go and you're going to think that something's wrong with your panel it's not you have to use like an impact driver to go ahead and drive those and get them threaded the other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to label and they do give you some labels generally in these i know ge does and you, but you're going to want to label so that's the basics of a service panel i hope you got a little something out of the video today if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing ring that little bell notification button so that you know about all the upcoming videos as i release them and we'll see you guys on the next one